Hello everybody. In uh, this unit, we are going to talk about uh, total order broadcast. And what we want to do is basically try to apply now a portable sequence consensus that we have defined in the previous units mm -hmm. to implement uh, a total order broadcast abstraction. So the implementation will be based on sequence consensus, and therefore, let us remind us with the properties of sequence consensus. So we have validity, which says that if a process decides on a sequence V, then V is a sequence of proposed command without duplicates. And agreement, which is uniform, says if a process decides U, another process decides on the sequence V, then one is a prefix of the other. Either u is a prefix of v or v is a prefix of u. We have also integrity, which says if a process p decides on u and later decides on v, then u is a prefix of v. And in abortable sequence consensus, if a command is proposed, then eventually every correct process decides on a sequence containing this command uh, C. That is termination. All right, so we have shown before how to implement efficiently sequence consensus. It's um, sequence paxis. What we have done is, um, in fact, uh, abortable sequence paxis implementation. And it's an algorithm which it will terminate if there can be chosen a leader so that he can propose and decide. Otherwise, it is possible that the algorithm will not terminate. So let us look now to abortable sequence consensus that we are going to use as an abstraction in this uh, unit. What we are going to have is the following event interface. We have a propose. So if we have abortable sequence consensus here. So a node can do a propose, a command, C, and Eventually, you will either get a decide of some command, or you are going to get an abort. So, decide sees an indication event, which sees a command, and abort is an indication event. What we are going to, to use is what we have ended up in the last unit, which is we are not going to decide by presenting a sequence, but instead we are go the command sequence is now will be sequence of decide events. So what we are going to see is a number of proposed coming into the system. There will be a number of decides coming out of the system. And so this will be decide maybe on C1 first, and then decide on C2, C3, and so on. But still, a sequence C1, C2, C3 is the decided dot, 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 will be the decided sequence that we, that we agree upon. And that is a sequence that have the properties that we discussed in the sequence consensus properties. Let us now look to total order broadcast. We start with an overview. We start with a specification of total order broadcast, followed by a sequence consensus-based total order broadcast algorithm. We have a number of uh, processes, these ones. And any process can perform a broadcast and this broadcast is going to be to be delivered to all processes in the system. We have a fixed set of nodes, so we are going to have a deliver to every node, hmm? also here. Deliver here, deliver to that guy, B, and deliver to C. Uh, if we remember, we had different types of um, broadcast abstractions that we studied in this course. One is, of course, the uh, reliable broadcast, which I mean, the proceeds are free to deliver message in any order, but they are delivered reliably. It means if a node delivers the message, every other node that is correct will deliver the message. That is reliable broadcast. Then we had also seen uh, a unit or um, a lecture discussing uh, causal order broadcast, where the process need to deliver messages in a specific order. It was the, the causal order that we discussed. And we also have seen that Causal order broadcast is partial in the sense that some 
uh, messages may be delivered in different order at different processes. So that is, we have to remember that, that if two messages are not causally related, then they could be delivered in arbitrary order at different processes. So let's now look at the specification of um, total order broadcast. We take it step by step. So what we say first is that total order broadcast processes must deliver all messages according to some order, but it should be the same order. All processes will observe the same order of delivery. And the order does not need to be causal order, nor need to be uh, FIFO source order. So, but of course, a causal order broadcast can also be made to, to respect FIFO or ordering or causal ordering. So let us see an example of um, a total order broadcast that is neither FIFO order or causal order. Here's a total order broadcast. We have three messages that are broadcast, M1, M2, and M3. And the delivery is in the same order. The delivery happens by delivering M2 first. You can see it here. And followed by M1. And followed by M3. You can see, first of all, that it is not, in this case, it's not source FIFO nor causal, of course, because M2 is delivered before M1, whereas uh, M1 is broadcast before M2. And... Um, yeah, so it is neither causal nor FIFO, but it is a total order because all the nodes deliver in the same order. So why do we need um, total order broadcast? Here is some specific uses. The first one is important. We will come back to this one later. It's very important one, which is to provide a replicated service. A service consisting of multiple processes that are replicas of each other and they need to treat all requests that coming into the system in the same order and preserve consistency okay uh, we are going to talk about replicated state machine later but this is one of the major uh, uses replicated state machine just are used in most fault tolerant systems including in many services within data centers and cloud computing another Possible application is a notification service where the subscribers need to get notification in the same order. For example, the subscribers could be stockbrokers that are getting uh, information from a stock exchange and getting the prices of different stocks, but they have to get in the same order. So now let us go and look to the specification of total order broadcast. As usual, it has a request event, which is a broadcast, and uh, a delivery event, which is deliver. And this says that this message has been delivered from that source. And the properties are similar to reliable broadcast properties. Here they are. Or uniform reliable broadcast properties, depending on how you want it. And an extra property we call the total order property. So let us look to the specification again to remind you with the reliable broadcast properties which says if pi and pj are correct nodes then every message broadcast from pi will eventually be delivered by pj we have the node application properties which are delivered only once we have no creation property no message are created out of thin air and then we have a uniform agreement property which says for any message, if any process delivers M, any process delivers M, so every correct process will deliver M. So these were the properties we need. Um, this is like uh, uniform reliable broadcast properties. Then we need to add one more property, which is the total order. In this case, will be a uniform total order property, which says let M1 and M2 be any two messages, let P and Q the any two processes that deliver M2. So if P delivers M1 before M2, then also Q should deliver M1 before M2. Okay, now that we have the our abstraction, so let us do an implementation of total order broadcast. 
And in this implementation, we are going to use abortable sequence consensus that we have just described in the beginning of this unit, and we have a detailed description late, uh, earlier. So let us, let us look to what are the components we need. So here is our components. We are going to implement a total order broadcast abstraction. It will have a broadcast request, and it will have a deliver message from the source here. Very good. The total order broadcast abstraction are going to use a number of components. So if we're going to use a timer, you will see why later. So to get timeout, it is going to use a perfect link abstraction to send and deliver messages. It's going to use a leader election omega abstraction to be able to know which node is the leader. And most importantly, of course, it's going to use abortable sequence consensus abstraction, which basically it means it can propose a message, can get back a decide or an abort. So this is the components that we have. So let us look now to the very simple implementation, which is actually quite efficient as long as the failure detector is good. If the failure detector is good, the following implementation that we're going to present is quite efficient. Here we have. So here's our algorithm. Let us first uh, have a small auxiliary function called trusted, and trusted basically tells the current process is the leader or not. Okay. And we are going to have um, just two local state variables, unordered and leader. So leader will be initialized to the initial leader in the from the leader election abstraction. And unordered will be used by messages sent by nodes in the system to be broadcast. So this is messages that you get when you when a node wants to uh, perform a broadcast and it will be there until the broadcast is delivered okay so here is what we have so we have our abstraction here the total order broadcast abstraction and what happens now if you get a broadcast request here so what we do is we add the message to what we call an ordered set. This is our unordered set that keeps track of messages. The message will be there in this unordered set until we are sure that it has been delivered to the leader. And the leader is the node that is going to propose to the abortable sequence consensus. So the leader is the proposer. That's what we want because we remember that we know from the previous six, um, units is that if we have a single proposer, it will be very efficient to perform abortable sequence consensus. So we start a timer, that is fine. And then we send the message to what we think is the leader. So what happened? We send the message to some node and if that node if we, when we deliver the message from that source, if the node thinks he is the leader, then he will trigger a propose to the abortable sequence consensus. So that's it. If he's not the leader, he will just ignore the message. Then we have these simple events. When I um, get a trust P from Omega, our eventual leader detector, we just uh, update the leader. And if I was a proposer and I get an abort, I just do nothing. So next, we see what happens. If you just remember here. So if we were the leader, we do a propose. That is very clear. And we go back. And we see what happens. Because of abortable sequence consensus, if it's not aborted, we are going to get a decide. The proposal is going to get to decide, and every other node in the system will get to decide. So what we do then, 
we remove m from our unordered set if it is in our unordered set. This not is just ignored. Nothing will happen here. And after that, we trigger basically a delivery. This is a total order broadcast delivery. What can happen as we, if we go back again to this, we'll see we send a message to the leader. But because of our uh, omega, it's not necessarily that this node is the leader. So, so then this message could be basically will be ignored by a node that is not a leader. Therefore, we need to, after a timeout for that message, after a timeout, if the message is already still in my unordered set, it means it basically it was lost. It didn't come to a leader, so no decision were made. Therefore, I will just trigger again, send it to what I think the leader is now on, and start a new, a new timeout for that message. Uh, the most important thing is to observe that if the failure detector is correct, this message will be delivered to the leader, and the leader is going to trigger a propose. He is going to do it in one round, and then a decide will happen, and everything is fine. If it's not the leader, the message is lost, and it will be repeated by using the timer. So let us now look to the correctness of the algorithm. So a correct process that gets a total order broadcast request will eventually per deliver by the perfect link abstraction M to a leader. That is a, eventually a stable leader. But it, and this is because of the repeated sense that we do using the timeout. A total order broadcast from a correct process will be eventually proposed by a correct leader. The leader, of course, might abort, we don't know. It doesn't matter. It will be descend again to a leader, and if that leader is stable, then the leader will I'll propose and decide. So the total order broadcast will eventually be decided. And the decisions, the messages coming out of the decision, will contain no duplicates. The total order broadcast will eventually, uh, that will be decided, will contain no duplicates. That's a property of sequence consensus. And all total order broadcast will be total order broadcast delivered by all correct processes in order. The same order would be observed by all correct processes. This is again is a property of sequence consensus. So it's quite simple. Once we have the abortable sequence consensus, as you can see, it is trivial to implement total order broadcast. So what's next? Uh, just to remind you, what we have done now is also we have a fixed we have fixed set of, of processes in the system. We will continue with this fixed set to describe another service using a multiple sequence consensus, which is a replicated state machine service. And after that, we will talk about what happens when the system changes configuration. It means that the machines in the system change. It's not a fixed number of machines anymore. So we'll do that by looking to reconfiguration of sequence paxos, so reconfigurable sequence paxos algorithm, and we look to reconfiguration in replicated state machine. Okay, hang on to the next lecture. Thank you.